yeah, that video you sent me of um, Thor rolling with that with the black belt. Like, yeah. so was he the guy from Polaris? Think? Yeah, I think yeah. it is. That I, I don't know whether he runs uh, Polaris, but he certainly does the commentary on it, and he does yeah. ADCC. He did the ADCC commentary as well, didn't he? I think, yeah, I recognised his voice from the video. Yeah, but uh, just a normal sized dude. Um, he does look like a bit like a bit of a large effect like, yeah, it's like not, a, not a small guy but not a not a massive guy no. doesn't look like he's in like particularly good shape he doesn't look like a physical you know he's not yeah, strong yeah, yeah. you can tell he's not like a super strong guy yeah he's, he's um, like he's more of a just an average yeah just yeah. an average Jiu Jitsu player so just to put it into context as well the video is of uh, Hathor Bjornsson going training with Bas Rutten yeah um, for his upcoming fight with Eddie Hall I don't know why he was teaching the ground and pound <laughs> I don't know why he was teaching the ground and pound either or kicking the back but when you've got the mountain there you're just gonna, you're just gonna have, have a bit of a play around, aren't you? Yeah. And it's bat rooting as well, so I'm surprised he didn't throw some like flying just split kicks like, in there. Yeah, palm <laughs> strikes and yeah, <laughs> bat rooting though, fucking legend. But let's get back on that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> so um, uh, halfway through the video, after they've done striking, um, the uh, the guy from Polaris, a fucking name escapes me. I don't know. I probably should have googled it beforehand. Page or <laughs> decides to start decides to have a role with the, the mm. mountain Thor like because why wouldn't you because when are you ever going to get to roll with somebody that size and yeah. world's strongest man it's been and, uh, a scalp for you really isn't it yeah pretty much like I have something but until you get into that's the round not what happened <laughs> you know? so um, go and watch it it's, it's on YouTube but just long story short he pulls guard and attempts to butt scoot a, a 6 foot 8 180 kilo dude I've got to, I've got to say I admire him for spinning around for that armbar there was a good, there was a good effort there. Yeah, but really good. He but wasn't shifting him. No, and there was no way he would have extended his arm from being stacked with what, what's thought about 170, 180 kilos. Yeah, yeah at least. Um, like, unless you're deadlifting 220, 230 for reps, you're not going to be. <laughs> I, I don't even think you shifted him then. No. Um, pulls guard, tries to play butterfly guard. Thor doesn't know what he's doing, and he's being really nice. Like basically barely putting any weight on him, not squeezing, just literally lying his weight on top of him. And you can see the effort underneath with the butterflies. He's like, fuck, I can't fucking move it. And uh, gets, Thor, Thor just mauls him away. Yeah, he gets past his guards. Yeah. And like when I was watching the video, I couldn't figure out whether he tapped to a submission or tapped to pressure. I think there's Bass Rooting in the video says, just squeeze your chest into his face, doesn't he? Yeah, your own mother's milk, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I mean, I've been underneath like 100 kilo guys doing that, and it's not comfortable, so I can't no. imagine what being underneath former world's strongest man, yeah. uh, Hapthor Bjornsson's like with that. Oh, yeah, it is. I've seen Game of Thrones, he crushes that guy's skull. Just. It's <laughs> light work, though, for the Hapthor, isn't yeah. it? But um, I just thought it was interesting, it just like we've said before, brings up the age old debate of strength versus technique. Mm. Before we get like, I was thinking, do you reckon he pulled guard out of being sort of polite, that Thor's inexperienced, he's a visitor to the gym, and, or do you think he can't wrestle? I th do you want to wrestle Thor? I'd have a go. You'd have a go? Yeah. I, <laughs> well, <laughs> hang off his leg. I, 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 I'll always have a wrestle with anybody. Like, yeah. I, I know when I, whenever I get the chance to swear with Cam, Standing up, he's going to like savage me, but I'm still gonna have a go. I, I agree with you, like, in I, every I, I circumstance, and except this up. circumstance, because just imagine he falls on you by accident, like you try and do something and he doesn't know how to fall or you can't quite do it, and he ends up landing on top of you. Yeah, true, but I don't know because if you if I've never seen someone fall and not put their hands out and try and land and catch themselves. Yeah, I think there was probably a certain element of like niceness, but also like they clearly hadn't explained what the rules were at the beginning because he just sits the guard and is like butt scooting at him. Yeah, and Thor's just like, what? What can I do? <laughs> um, so I don't know. What, I don't know what the setup was before it, but it's certainly interesting. Yeah, and, and a good lesson like that. If if the if there's a significant size difference, you don't want to be underneath. No, no, that's. Uh... That's a big, that's a big one, like, I'm just I, trying to think I understand about it being sort of polite and playing guard if you're the more experienced player and 
they're a visitor and you don't want to sort of have, have that sort of aggressive initiation to your first kind of form of contact with, with them. But now it's <laughs> It's a weird one though, isn't it? Because he's a white belt. He's, he's less than a white belt because he's never trained jiu-jitsu before. Yeah. So, like, imagine just going all out at a white belt, the big white belt, without really explaining the rules or telling them what they can do beforehand. Just fun the day. Going though, for it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Snap some heels up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I just can't figure his tactics out because I'm someone that big and that strong. Limb locks aren't going to work. No. The only thing that's going to work is a strangle from guillotine or from the back. Well, we were only talking last week about how Chaddy just bicep curled yeah. you out of an armbar. And Chaddy walks around between 95 and 100 kick. Actually, he even got him, uh, Thor let him put him in an armbar and said, try and break my grip, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the only time he could do it was when he played in the rotation and then extended. Yeah, yeah. By which point he's going to stand up and bam bam you into the floor. Yeah. Oh, I would not have liked to be there if those yeah. strikes involved. It was fun though. Oh, it's great, great um, thing to watch. Would you rather watch Thor versus Eddie Hall in a grappling match or a, or the boxing match that's going to happen? <laughs> I don't know because <laughs> I think they'd both be equally as entertaining. Yeah. I reckon they should have a three-match thing: boxing, grappling, MMA. I think Eddie Hall comes out at least two out of three in that. I think it takes three out of three. Yeah. Because he's <laughs> arguably, I see he's my folk. Yeah, unless on the grappling side of it, unless Thor could just get on top and just hold him there and score two points. Yeah. Two points. Pass guard. <laughs> hold him for the hold him for points. Like, I think. Here, like, here's a question: Do you have Eddie Hall taking this boxing match then, or do you have Thor taking the boxing? Uh, from what I've seen, Eddie. Eddie seems to be doing less gimmicky stuff and actually getting the gym training, from what I've seen. Whereas Hathor so yeah, if you seems to be doing that bit more gimmicky kind of stuff. I've seen, them, I've seen them both at pads, and yeah. I've seen them both sparring. And that. Eddie yeah. Hall's sparring looks significantly better yeah. than Thor's sparring. Thor, you know, they're both... I, I, Eddie looks like he's done a bit in the past. Mm. Thor looks like he's not done anything and he's still in the beginning stages of learning. Yeah. And it's the same uh, when he was sparring. Now, whether he's just like holding back and not showing his proper technique, it was jab, cross, hook. Jab, hook, same combo for the for the whole sparring round. Mm. He left his hands down a lot. Like, he's going to get hit. And, yeah. and Eddie all looks like he wants blood. Whereas Thor seems like he's doing it more for the challenge of the boxing match yeah. almost. Well there seems to be like the little underlying sort of backstory of beef between those two. Yeah. Um, I don't know how personal it gets between them, but from the sort of documentary and how serious Eddie Hall took getting that war on his man title and he saw Thor as sort of his main like object that's in the way of him. Yeah. So he took I think he took that quite as a quite seriously. Yeah. Um and I think Thor sort of sees him as kind of being like that. Almost tried to little brother him, didn't he? Like <laughs> saw him as like being he's just being annoying there. Sort of yeah, let you get your little bit of anger out of the way. Funny though, getting that five hundred and one kilo deadlift. Yeah. Just like if anything, but just to troll him. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Um, and I like them both, and they both seem like they've got the uh, aggressive sides yeah. as well, from what I've seen and what I've heard from other strong men, mm. and from what you can see on like stuff that you can see on YouTube on their own channels. Um, there definitely is a beef there. I think that there's more aggression from Eddie towards yeah. Thor than the other way around. Uh, Thor seems like he's got a lot going on with other different streams of... of uh... Yeah, he doesn't seem like he's doing this for the money grab. Yeah. Does he sort of see, he's just doing it be like, it's a challenge. Yeah, and I'm not sure, he's doing it for that. a money grab. Yeah, I, think he just wants, I think he wants to fucking kill him. I yeah. think Eddie Hall wants to fucking kill him. <laughs> yeah. I think that'll, uh, that'll be interesting when, they've, when one of them gets hit properly as well. Yeah. Because... I don't think there's going to be anybody in either of their training camps that's going to be able to deliver a punch with the same amount of weight 
that they yeah. couldn't be able to deliver on the night. Well, now that's what's interesting about uh, watching Thor sparring as well, because he, everything looks light, tappy. But you know he's got the power, and yeah. is he doing it to try and conserve energy? Has he been told to do it? It's interesting because... Probably because Padman's sake, he's probably been told, yeah, told it down a bit. Yeah, very, very likely. Um, but then you're building a bad habit for yeah. translating over into the, into the fight. Now, I know he's got a couple of exhibition matches coming up as well. Oh, does he? Yeah. One, I think certainly before the end of this year, or it might even be on like New Year's Eve or something like that. All right. Um, just an exhibition match, yeah. but just uh, getting in the ring, sparring against an actual boxer in front of a crowd. Is the, is the boxer a name or is the... We'll find out now. But either way, it's, uh, it's an interesting way of approaching it. Yeah. I think, uh, I think they're both going to need some sort of chin up fights before the actual event. But, I don't know, it'd be interesting, like, I, I do want to see how they react when they get hit and whether they're doing sort of like, we're going to shut the doors and we're going to spar till someone gets knocked out, kind of sparring. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm not a bit, don't get me wrong, I'm not a big uh, boxing follower, so I don't know the guy, Stephen Ward, you know him? No, not no. familiar. Um, but it's on, it's on the 16th of January. Interesting. So, proper match, exhibition match, uh, I don't know whether it's with like headgear on or whatever, but you would presume it wouldn't be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting either way, uh, and you know, it's not really a fight I'm particularly interested in seeing, other than for the entertainment point of view, it's going to be a terrible fight. Yeah. Um, the te both techniques are going to be shocking, but it's just it's a gonna spectacle, be isn't it? It's just going to be a spectacle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Here's the next spectacle then as well. I know we're sort of like grappling and everything, but Mayweather and that, is it Logan Paul or Josh Paul? Uh, is, he, is he like, yeah, I know. The, he's YouTube. the guy who fought the KS, with that KSI fight, wasn't it? Or is I it the other guy? Is it his bro it's is one it his of them. Brother? It's not the one that fought recently, he fought the basketball player. It's the one, it's his brother. So it might be the KSI one. How, are these, taken how are these fights getting like the main card? And like you've got world champions on the undercard. Money. They're a bigger name. YouTube money. They, they, are, they are technically a bigger name. Kids watching them. That's it. Like, how many fo like, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's going to be in the millions that follows these YouTube stars. And if you get a fraction of like a tenth of their subscribers tuning in, that's going to be over a million people tuning in buying the pay-per-views. Is this also not just more of an argument that boxing's not as entertaining as it used to be? Are we going there? <laughs> I, I, agree. I agree. I agree. Uh, somebody was asking me about it the other day. Uh, they were asking me, you know, do I still watch the UFC? Um, and they were talking about is it, is boxing more popular and MMA more popular? Now, in my opinion, like with the general consensus of, I know this is a grappling podcast. Most people find the grappling aspect of G uh, MMA to be boring, yeah, because they don't understand what's going on. Um, so for me, I've never understood why kickboxing isn't more watched in America particularly than boxing. I find it to be more entertaining. There's more going on. K1 and glory. Yeah, so I was gonna say from from the general comments I've heard, a lot of these more of the sort of Mai Tai fights where they have the ceremony before the fights. Yeah. Which puts a lot of spectators off. But K1 and Glory, I think it might just be the machine behind the actual promotions needs a bit more of a push to get on to... Did, did you ever used to watch K1 back in the day yeah. on uh, Eurosport? Yeah. Ernesto Hoost and love Mark Hunt. Oh, fucking hell, that was amazing. And Glory's got some really good cards now. Yeah. And even like, is it M1 Global as well? Yep. Like, there's some really good, like, organizations out there for the striker arts. And yet we're, we're getting left with underwhelming boxing cards. Yep. Which are grossing like way more money than other people. Like John Wayne Parr, very very talented uh, kickboxer, uh, fought all over the world, multiple world titles, um, over hundred fights since as well. No, I'm sure. And can't can't quote me on this, but I don't think 
one of his, like, I don't think over his career, he's probably earned the ticket sale revenue of, say, what a, a Derek Chisora would have earned. Yeah. Yeah, arguably, he's a more talented and more accomplished fighter. It's the, uh, it's the, the machine behind boxing, though, isn't it? Yeah. The, the powerhouse of promoting and building fighters up to like a 30, you know, winning streak and making them to that status of undefeated mm -hmm. and then you've got two undefeated guys going against each other now, this has always been the thing that's been said about MMA everybody fights everybody yeah so to have an undefeated record in MMA like Khabib or Izzy like you've done something special mm -hmm. uh, because you fought monsters yeah like John Jones I know he's got technically a loss that wasn't a loss not a loss but like that uh, I know the, the runs of win are shorter, but when you consider who they fight, it is every single fight uh, after a certain point is world champions. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty early on in your career as well. I'd say once you get up to the top 15 ranking, you're not going to get an easy fight, especially in the big organisations, your Bellators, your UFCs. Um, oh, God, I'm, I'm going to probably get skinned alive for not knowing all the organisations, but um, what's the one that... Mighty Mouse went to, is it one? One? Yeah, yeah. one championship. Um, like even Cage Warriors, <clears throat> like yeah. their top tens are arguably like contenders to be in the UFC. Well, that's kind of, it's kind of that feeder field, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, um, and that, that's another good thing about grappling is like jiu-jitsu tournaments, the, whether it be the, the super fights or IBJJF stuff, the top guys are competing against each other yeah. on like a couple of monthly basis. Like you'll see f top fights of the same guys competing a couple of times a year mm. um, because it's like low risk, low injury, you know, they're not going to be, you know, the, you're not sustaining brain damage yeah. and stuff like that from the fights. Like it is a possibility for being there. but. Equally, it's less important to, for the for your progression of your career to receive a loss. Mm. Like um, Craig Jones, again, for an example. Yeah, I think he's the world's favourite grappler at the moment. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's those leopard, leopard, print, uh, yeah. leopard print underwear, what right? His, um, what was the video where he was in the kitchen and he was advertising his new video and he was like, just stark as... Yeah. <laughs> that was, I watched it and I was in tears watching it, it was brilliant. But is it him now that said like, I'm sure he said it on the, the Matt Burn podcast he was talking about, people want to see finishes yeah, and that's how you become a popular fighter mm. and that's how you make your name and that's why people will buy your DVDs. People don't want to buy a DVD on how to hold two points and, no. and hold out and stall for a, for a win for the match but they want to see exciting stuff. But then for that I'd argue that the rule sets of the leading tournaments have bred that kind of fighter and then having the super fights becoming more prominent as the sort of nogi sub only scene sort of taken off over the past couple of years that's bred almost a different kind of athlete again who is going to chase the finishes and not going to hold tight control for points because there is no points super fight specialist that's it like and then when they go over to your tournaments, they're already um, sort of thinking of sub, 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 as opposed to take down, pass guard, hold, mount, back, hold, check the time right now because I'm looking for a finish. Mm -hmm. It's finish, 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 regardless of where you are. It's kind of like American Jiu Jitsu versus the Brazilians in Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of those Brazilians come up through the IBJJF stuff and they play for points mm. like Denise is a really good example of somebody who's able to hold positions and just win out matches yeah um, as well as finish yeah definitely and um, I think yeah sort of the revolution of the Nogi sub only scene has bred like a different type of fighter now mm. and you can almost see it with like your Craig Jones versus your Leandro Lowe in the ADCC. Yeah. Um, the Real Total Brothers coming up. Like, not only are they very, very talented, but they look for the submission. As But then they've also got, like, you can see Galvao's trained them with secure the points and position still. 
as well as looking for your positions. Yeah, they're, they're special athletes. That's they're, they're really interesting to watch. I I think I just want to see a full saga with Nicky Ryan versus is it Ty? Yeah, I really just want to see. I I can watch them go back and forth year on year to see who's developing at a better rate. Yeah. Um, and that ties all in with what we were talking about before. Nobody cares if you lose. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're just going to fight again. Yeah. And then yeah, you exactly. can see who's better the next time. Mm. Like, it's almost a case of like, right, okay, you got the loss, come back again. Can you learn your mistake and beat the person now? Yeah. Knowing what happened last time. Um, and that's kind of what makes it a little bit more interesting. Like, pe- yeah. people know they're going to go away and work on those weaknesses and come back and try and come back with a different look. Mm. And it's almost the, th- the thing that's more interesting than boxing, in a way, the, the possibilities of how to play Jiu Jitsu or Infinite. You yeah. can come back with a completely different game. Yeah, what definitely. are your options in boxing? You, I'm not simplifying the sport because I think it's a sport that's got a high level of technique and skill and creativity, but it's punching. So yeah. you can add attack or defend. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you could simplify it to the same as Jiu Jitsu as well, but uh, the, the possibilities are infinite. Yeah, like, I think you. You can't change if, your if, boxing if, game that much more than you could change your Jiu Jitsu game. No. And I think I think in a room full of boxers, you'd upset quite a few people saying that. Yeah, I'm um, sure. Which is, which is granted, but I completely agree with you there. Like, you. Unless you've reached a level of mastery where you can move like your Roy Jones Jr. in his prime, um, even Tyson in his prime, where the, that dynamic and unpredictable, but then also that unpredictability becomes predictable. Whereas with grappling, I this is probably down to our education in the sport as well a bit more, but you can play that many different times on in an open mat, let alone on the night when you're when you like performing. Yep. It it sort of supports what you've said about the there's more possibilities to play differently and evolve your game than there is in boxing. And I'm not knocking boxing. Not I enjoy boxing. Like by no means I'm a, a good boxer. Um, and I'd probably get spanked if I went into a gym. A boxing gym and just boxed, um, but I can box a little bit, yeah. um, and enough certainly enough to understand on a basic level uh, what I'm trying to say. And of course, the more time you spend doing something and putting your energy into being creative and thoughtful towards boxing, yeah, I'm sure there's those levels, there's levels and everything. But just on a broad look at it, um, yeah, on a layman's on a layman's sort of from both sports, yeah. And uh, I'm sure uh, boxing guys would say the same looking at Jiu Jitsu, like, oh, yeah. or you're just going to grab him and lie on the floor and then attack a limb. Yeah, I guess, like, sort of looking at it, if I box onto grappler, you could even be like, you're either a wrestler or a guard player. Yeah. Like, and that, that's simplifying it there, and then you could be like, okay, looking at that point of view, it, it does simplify the evolution of the player. But then also looking at the sort of evolution of the player as well. Does super fights stunt an athlete's growth more than tournaments? Depends on it is. I, I would say if you're an up and coming athlete and you're looking for super fights specifically, then that's probably the wrong focus. Like let the super fights be a byproduct of your performance elsewhere, um, and try and hope you know get invited to super fights because you have good performances. So let's say like look at say someone of Craig Jones calibre. So if he was training specifically for super fights and one opponent at a time, would he would that progress his game as fast as if he was training for a tournament at the same sort of say you have five super fights in one year and five tournaments in one year, would his would his game evolve more training for tournaments or would his game evolve more training for super fights? You could probably make the argument that way, just rephrasing the question slightly differently. Like, I suppose training for a tournament, you're going to work on your own game uh, more with the with the potential of fighting anybody in the tournament, like probably having four or five fights that you're not going to know who you're going to face. Whereas training for a super fight, you might end up playing to beat that one person. Mm. So it might narrow down the skill set that you focus on. 
So you can either get really good at one thing, or you can get a little bit better at five things. Yeah. So it depends how you want to look at it. I agree. So blue belts, stop <laughs> finding super fights. Yeah. Stop advertising on your Instagram that you're what in super fights, tournaments, tournaments, tournaments. When you're I see what's going on here. That was just an opportunity to vent that out, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It just came to my head then yeah. when it was because um, like I'm how sure can I take this question up to? Uh... <laughs> Cause I'm sure you slice. Like, Prior to everything happening, you saw it where it's like inexperienced players, like almost begging super fights when there's local tournaments every other weekend in their area when their desire is to compete, but they don't want to go to a tournament. They want to get super fights because it's the in thing or the cool thing at the moment. Super fight sponsorship. Um, you acai. It, uh, uh, yeah, well, it's a, it's a slippery slope onto the acai <laughs> path. Um, I don't know, it's just it, that's where the scene is in Jiu Jitsu at the yeah. moment, so you almost can't kind of blame them. No. You know, like most people at that stage are probably quite young as well, and uh, you know, you just got aspirations of being a, a Jiu Jitsu superstar. Yeah. So the quickest fast track to that is well, I want to sit on my name on a, on a card. I want to be on a super fight with other guys that are on a super fight. So you see the mentality, like you can understand why. Yeah, I understand and, why. And uh, the appeals there, if you want to be a jiu-jitsu athlete professionally, uh, you've got to get your name out there and do it. And uh, yeah, so, you know, don't knock the blue belts who want to do that because you've, you've got to have yeah, the drive to do it. But also, like, go out and compete. Yeah. like When we can you, compete again. Yeah, if you're hungry for that competitive nature and you don't narrow down your, uh, yeah, what should I say, don't narrow down your options to super fights only. Yeah. Get yourself into tournaments and stop asking to be on super fights. Wait for the super fights to approach you, and that's when you're more likely to be ready. It's like you're more likely to get laid if you just do something worthwhile of getting laid rather than sliding into some girl's <laughs> DMs pestering them about getting laid all the time. It's a good analogy. Yeah. Um, and on that note, <laughs> Make um, sure you hit us all up on the <laughs> socials. Follow us, promote us for super fights. <laughs> <laughs> Get me in a super fight. Yeah. Nah, Don't uh, slide into my DMs either. And Blue Belts, if you just want to give us a gif about super fights, I'll take the heat. Don't worry. I'm yeah. after the smoke. <laughs> two and a half, the two and a half strikes podcast continues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, hit us up on uh, all the socials, Grapplers Academy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you Apple um, Podcasts, the Bonafide PT, Coach by Sai. Um, yeah, hit us up. Stay tuned for some exciting stuff coming in the new year as well. Definitely. We've got some we've got some big ideas coming your way. Uh, I think everybody's gonna like them. Yeah. And all your friends who don't do jujitsu already, this Send is gonna be a perfect man. opportunity to get them started. Yeah, definitely. 